as well. <clears throat> All right. Yeah. I think we are comprehensive. Uh, Jimmy Sustar, it's great to talk to you, my man. And it doesn't matter. It's a super late here and uh, you're you're in the car driving. We think we thank the Lord for what technology affords us, my man. Yeah, hey, man. <laughs> hey, well, What's listen, up, <laughs> it's great. It's great talking to you. And uh, just for those who are uh, kind of tuning in and checking out this interview, uh, Jim Sustar has uh, been involved in in ministry, pastoral ministry, uh, trauma work, justice work, uh, work overseas in Southeast Asia, um, and, he, and he's been doing ministry for 25, probably close to 30 years. And uh, so anyways, really glad to have you uh, with us, uh, Brother Jimmy, and I think we're just, just going to get to it. Uh, Jimmy, I'm going to throw out some questions, and we'd just love to hear kind of off the dome just some of your uh, responses uh, as well. So we'll start with the first one. What is some advice you would give teens or individuals going overseas uh, for a short-term trip in general or maybe even in Southeast Asia in particular? Mm. <clears throat> I would say to do your due diligence and learn the context that you're going to, the culture. Um, <clears throat> and that's best learned from people of that uh, nation and or people who are global workers there. <clears throat> Excuse me. Uh, that is uh, the baseline expectation for for as far as I see it, when people would come to visit when we were there. But further, I would say to understand that you are not going for just your own benefit of a one-off experience that you can take home and People go expecting some grand experience. It can become distracting from the real possibility of transformation of your own self. I would offer that it's important to consider that, um, entertain that idea, pray into that idea uh, that and it is not a selfish thing at all. Like, I don't mean to take your eyes off of the service that you're doing for others, but but to be open to the Lord working in your own heart in transformative in transformative ways that you can then continue being shaped in and implement right where you live, or maybe God would call you to go longer term in another culture. But those are the, the two main things. Um, yeah, do do your homework. And and also, um, I guess a third thing would be to be flexible in your expectations. And um, say yes to as much as you can and, and take it all in. That's good. Yeah, yes and amen. With, with that, the second is somewhat of a follow-up question, Jimmy. What are some misconceptions uh, regarding short-term or even long-term missions overseas? Uh, the first one that came to mind is that we're going to change the world. Um, this is, uh, I'm sure we'll invite some pushback from some people, but Jesus never told you to go change the world. You can't. Mm. Um, we are invited to partner with Jesus who makes all things new. And that God is already in the work in the world working to change the world. And we're we're invited to say yes and partner with God. And and there's a lot of reasons why that's important to understand. But in this context of the conversation about going on a trip and having an experience, um, that takes a lot of pressure off of you. 
<laughs> to just say, wow, I want to go see what God is already doing. And I want to, I want to attach myself to it the best I can. And, and that, that also provides an opportunity uh, to discover maybe gifts that you didn't know you had, mm. that you can be fully yourself immersed in this culture and in this work that God is already doing. And, and, and maybe there would be a moment where you find yourself adding something to it that isn't happening already. And that's great. That's amazing. It's beautiful. But also being at peace with playing your part to support and continue the work that God's already doing through the people who live there. Yeah. So, yeah, but to answer your question, probably a misconception is that we're going to, to make this massive impact and we're going to change the world. Well, only God can do that. But with that, don't ever downplay the impact you will have simply by being there and joining hands with the work that's happening. Amen. Amen. Come on. That's good. I think something that you were talking about is being there, us just being present, uh, us being yeah. as opposed to just us doing stuff. That's right. Like accomplishing or producing things. Uh, relationship, I think, is really key. Uh, as you recognize, you've lived overseas, is yeah, being overseas. So with that said, I think that let's roll into the third question, which is, uh, do you have a story or some examples of a quote, like, quote, unquote, mm -hmm. Uh, bad team that you've experienced overseas or someone who's come and just, you know, the attitude uh, hasn't been um, too savory, as it were, where uh, you look at your wife and say, uh, I'm, I'm hoping that that individual or that, that team, you know, won't come, come back in the future. They've just uh, really have been challenging. Do you have any, any of that? I have um, quite a few, um, but the general theme in it. Like, do you want to hear an actual story or what I pulled from or both? <laughs> yeah, maybe a, a little bit of both. You, you kind of got me curious. Sure. <laughs> yeah. Um, so there was a team <clears throat> that came and they had made preparations for months before visiting um, to do these pretty outdated drama presentations uh, as a means of telling the facts of the gospel and did not consult us first. And even then we didn't know it was something that we should address and say, by the way, don't do these. Um, we didn't know that was what they would have planned. Um, so that felt very presumptuous. And, um, but what made it more complicated was that their, when, when we discovered what they wanted to do, we said, okay, well, can we see one of them? And what was portrayed in this drama, uh, addressed things that basically it's, so just to explain the purpose of these kinds of play acting dramas is if there's a language barrier. So there's no, there's no, there's no speaking, there's just acting out. And, and so it's left open to translation. And so what the theme was in this that they showed us was that there's sin in the world and Jesus comes to take the sin off of us. But what they were portraying as sin were things like drinking alcohol and smoking. And they were wanting to present these things um, to a group of people who the majority of were addicted to heroin and crack. And these were privileged, white, wealthy kids. Um, sorry, students, young people 
um, who really didn't have the authority and life experience to do that, to portray the idea of sin as drinking and smoking to people addicted to hard drugs who were also homeless. And so uh, we really wrestled in, with it and we said, well, we don't believe this is appropriate for our content. And they pushed back and were very upset, very disappointed and said, okay, we won't do them. And they spent like a week and a half with us. And on the very last day when we weren't looking, they did it. And it was, you know, in the end, it's not that big of a deal. But what the problem was, was we're there all the time. Like that's our ministry context. And, and our ministry context is not, um, the way we did things was not, here's what you're doing wrong and here's who can fix it, Jesus. But it was a relational ongoing um, ministry to people who were very, very broken. And we have built trust with them. And one of the things that we work really hard to overcome in order to have that relational ministry is shame. And we learned that it's the spirit of humility that kills the spirit of shame. And we felt that that demonstration by the team was not in the spirit of humility. And so that was a frustrating situation. And our street evangelism, as they called it, our style was setting up a table on the side of the road where they lived and serving coffee and hanging out and hearing people's stories and praying for people and, and creating space to be with them in solidarity. And we were trying to impart that to this same team. And they were, they were great as far as like service and helping and all that. But two things were said at the end of the trip. One, one of the youths said, I don't get this hanging out with people. Every mission trip I've been on, we build a build something or do a project with our hands. I don't understand this whole being with people thing. At the end of the trip, we still didn't understand. But then the other troubling thing was the, the leader on the way to the airport to go home said, I'm just so disappointed that we didn't get to do any street evangelism on this trip. So that is a frustrating thing when you spend, you know, twice the amount of hours than you normally do hosting a team, hoping to impart the heart and the vision, and, and it doesn't take. Um, the end. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. The end. Yeah, yeah, man. The the heart the heart of humility is really key in these situations, especially yeah. when you don't know. Like it's a, for me, and I think you probably agree, Jimmy. It's actually okay for you to to not know. It's okay for you to have a level of ignorance, a level of just not understanding mm -hmm. when you when you touch down. But there also has to be a release of, of that and trusting. Uh, kind of the people, the boots on the ground, the people who are there to lead you, the people who are there to disciple you in this, like let them teach you. But if yeah. at the end, if, you know, you have taught and you have imparted, but then they're just, it's more of rejecting, you know, it's not that you don't know, it's that you actually don't want to know. That's the hard part. Let me ask you this last question, yeah. uh, uh, brother, sure. and, then, and then we'll wrap it up. Uh, so after, after a trip is, is finished, what are some practical ways that teams or individuals could really support the ministries or the global workers um, that they have visited? That's a great question. Um, I believe in the power of storytelling. Tell the story mm -hmm. and, and tell, tell, invite people into the story and be a bridge from between your experience and the ongoing work that you visited, that you left. If you have the means to support that financially, do it. Even the smallest amount consistently is something. It's helpful, very helpful. Um, 
but also invite others to give to it by the story that you tell. Um, and it's, you know, I was in full-time supported missionary status for 20 years. And there was this thing among missionaries that were like, yeah, but also if you can't support us, uh, we need prayer too. And kind of like, oh yeah, like laughing, like, yeah, right. You really need money. Well, that that's actually not true. Like prayer, like we're nothing without prayer. Like we, we and if you don't believe that, then I would encourage you to examine what prayer is and learn more about it. But prayer is everything. Uh, there's I, I've been with Youth with a Mission for years, and there's a, a very respected seasoned leader in YWAM, Youth with a Mission, that says the leader in the room, the person that is the leader in the room is the first person that says, let's pray, or we need to pray. That's who's the leader in that moment, because that that is vital. So, praying for the work, for the people involved, for the workers and their health and their sanity and their safety and their rest, and praying for the people that they minister to and they help, <clears throat> is everything. And another way to indirectly support, you're not really supporting that specific work but you're supporting the mission of God in the world is to take what you learned on that trip and implement it where you live. Find one person to pour into, to, to serve, to help even just your next door neighbor that is supporting and doing the work and mission of God. Mm. That's good. That's good, my man. Well, hey, listen, I just want to say thank you so much, uh, brother, for your time. Thank you for your ministry and uh, and all that you, you do as well. Uh, Lord bless you, brother Jimmy, and uh, have yourself a great day.